Greetings, and welcome to the Double Take demonstration of Double Take Availability Full Server to ESX Protection. In this short video, we're going to show you how easy it is to protect an entire Linux machine from anywhere, physical, virtual, or cloud, into vSphere. So let's go ahead and get started. What I have in my environment, I have an EP CentOS 70-3 server that is highlighted right here in an Hyper-V environment on an AMD platform. It has Double Take installed on it, and I have the Double Take availability license on it as well. In my target vSphere environment, my appliance is going to be the 70-2 server right above it. This machine has Double Take availability installed on it and the Double Take availability license. At this point, I have my console installed on a desktop, laptop, doesn't really matter to us, and now we're ready to create our job. Simply right-click the server and say Protect and you're immediately taken to the job workload section. We're doing the full server to ESX job workload today and you have all the volumes on the right hand side. I just have root and boot but if you had other volumes you would see those and you could deselect any non root or boot volumes but you can also customize your replication rules by excluding files and folders or even wildcards if you want to. I want to get absolutely everything so I'll go ahead and click next. Now we are to choose the target server. It's going to show me all the servers that have a double take availability license on them but of course I want to select the one that is in my vSphere environment so I'm going to choose that 70-2 server. If you don't see the server that you want you can click find a new server down at the bottom and enter the IP address or server name. Next it asks for our vCenter or vSphere server credentials at this point. I have vCenter in my environment so I'm going to go ahead and use that one. However, we do not necessarily require vCenter so if I didn't have it I could say find a new VMware server down at the bottom and specify my vSphere host. Once you click next you're going to the set options page. There's lots of options in here. We're going to go through a few of them but not all of them. So I highly recommend hitting F1 at this point so you can see all the different options, what they do and you can make a decision that's best for your organization. The first one I want to talk about is the replica virtual machine configuration. By default we see that the source has one socket, one core, and one gig of RAM. We're going to match that. However, you can increase or decrease that as you need it and you can also specify the replica virtual switch that the machine needs to go on to. Under replica virtual machine volumes, it's going to create a new disk by default but I can use a pre-existing disk. I can specify the data store and the format. I can also specify the volume maximum size, the volume group size, I can increase that or decrease that as needed. Under replica virtual machine network settings, by default we're going to fail over the IP address of .35. If my vSphere environment is on a different subnet, check the box here and you can change that to whatever matches that new subnet. A new feature in Double Take 8 is the failover monitor. By default we are going to monitor and if five minutes goes by and the target can't talk to the source we're going to indicate a failover condition has been met. We do this via ICMP pings but you can also change this and have it monitor via the Double Take service in case ICMP is disabled. Under failover options we have wait for a user to initiate failover. This is the reason you're prompted for intervention when a failover condition has been met. Uncheck this and it does an automatic failover. But highly recommend if you're going to uncheck that, make that failover monitor a lot higher to take into account any server restarts or temporary network outages. You also have the ability to run scripts. You want these scripts to be on your appliance server. The pre-failover script it will run before the reboot, the post failover script will run after. We can also specify other things such as the network route, snapshots if I want to, snapshots will be vSphere snapshots that are going to be taken, I can specify compression, bandwidth controls, and we even have encryption as a server property if you need to set that. Click next and you go to the job summary screen. The job summary screen is a pre-flight checklist. It's going to verify the source environment, verify the target environment, verify that they can communicate and make sure everything's okay before we even get started because we don't want to waste your time if it's not going to work beforehand. If you get any warnings or errors here, you can click on those and see what those are and then address those issues. Everything came out great, so we're ready to click finish and create our job. The job has been created and we're automatically taken to the jobs page. What's happening at this point, it's talking to the vSphere environment and creating the replica virtual machine. It's going to create the VMDK files and then it's going to attach them up to the appliance, that 70-2 server. It's going to go ahead and format the disks and assign them as mount points to this appliance. Then we start mirroring and replicating into those VMDK files through the appliance. 
we start mirroring and replicating at the same time. Mirror process is the comparison of getting all the data in sync initially and replication is the real-time byte level changes as they occur on the production system. The mirror process will end and that's when we get into that protected state. The replication process never ends, so we're always in sync between the source and the target. The mirroring process has begun now. We can see a percentage. When it gets all the way done, like I said, we're going to be completely protected. You get additional details here down at the bottom. And once we're protected, you need to take a look at the recovery point latency. This is a quick check at any point in time to see if your target is behind the source. If it shows a value of seconds, minutes, or hours, that's how you know how far behind it is. Ideally, when you go to fail over, this should be at zero, telling you that the source and target are completely in sync. You can double click these jobs here, and what you'll have is you have the ability to edit the job. Maybe you need to change the snapshot schedule. Maybe you need to change the bandwidth schedule or the compression. You can validate the job again, make sure that everything still is valid and everything is still will work for your protection. You can do that really at any time. What we're going to do, let's hang out for a minute, allow this mirror to complete. We're going to connect to the production environment. We're going to install an application, modify some files. Then we're going to go ahead and check out our vSphere environment and then fail over to it. So our mirror is now done. So before we do the failover, let's create some change on this production machine. Also, let's install an application. First, I want to run an application called IOTOP. By default, it's not there, so let's go ahead and install it. The package has been installed, so let's go ahead and run the application now. We can see that the application is there. Also, let's go ahead and create some files. I've created some files. Again, this is generating replication change that is being sent over to the target in real time. Let's check out that target environment. I have the vSphere environment up and you can see under recent tasks where it reconfigured the virtual machine, the replica, that's where it created the machine and added the disks specifically. And then it reconfigured the appliance that's attaching those disks to that appliance here. We can also see there's my machine right here. It's completely off. There's nothing running on it because those disks are attached to the appliance. Remember, our vSphere environment is an Intel-based environment, and our Hyper-V environment is AMD. At any point, we can go ahead and fail over. However, before we do that, I want to do one last thing. I want to go ahead and take a snapshot. Taking a snapshot with the full server to ESX workflow will utilize vSphere to take these snapshots. It's going to basically pause the transmission from the source to the target temporarily. Then it's going to take the disks, detach them from the appliance, attach them up to the replica again, take the vSphere snap, take the disk, put them back on the appliance, mount them, and resume transmission. So this takes a minute to happen. We're going to let this finish, and once that's done, we can go ahead and fail over. So it took just a couple minutes to do that snapshot. However, during that entire process, I had the ability to fail over. So even while it's doing that pausing and unmounting and taking the snapshots and mounting back up, you could still fail over at any time, so you're always protected. Let's go ahead and do an actual failover now. So we have the options to do a live failover, or we could fail over to that snapshot that we just took. I'm going to go ahead and do the live failover and click failover. What it's doing right now, it's detecting that the source server is still online, and it's going ahead and shutting that one down. Once that is shut down, it's going to go ahead and do some system state processing while the disks are still attached to that appliance just to fix up a couple of things. It's going to detach them from the appliance and attach them back up to the replica and start it up. This whole process is relatively quick and you can be back up and running in a very short amount of time. Okay, so it's been about four minutes and the failover is completely done. Let's go check out what happened. In our Hyper-V environment where I came from, the EP CentOS 7.0-3 server is now off. In my SSH connection, it of course disconnected because it's not really there. And if we go into our vSphere environment, we can see a couple times it reconfigured the appliance to detach those disks. And then you see the replica machine being powered on. It's coming up with all of its settings and all of its applications and all of its files. Let's go ahead and attach to it and check it out. I've reconnected the SSH session. I've logged into it. Let's see if IOTOP is there. And it is. And let's go into that documents folder that I had, and my files are there too. 
My failover is completely done. Everything's up and running in the vSphere environment. Again, from Hyper-V to vSphere, AMD to Intel, with full server to ESX protection by double take availability. I'm back at the console. The only thing left for me to do now is to delete this job. To get back to my original environment, if I wanted to, I can either fix the original environment and create a full server job to get back to that original environment if it's anywhere other than vSphere. If I was coming from vSphere to vSphere, maybe one data center to another, then I could actually create a full server to ESX job going backwards as well. Then I can get back into a protecting state and fail over again during a maintenance window. This brings us to the end of the double take demonstration of double take availability full server to ESX protection. To learn more and to stay informed, please give us a call at the number on your screen or visit us at doubletake.com. I'd like to thank you for your time and have a great day.